The Baron moved out and away from the globe of Arrakis. As he emerged from the shadows, his figure took on dimension, grossly and immensely fat, and with subtle bulges beneath folds of his dark robes, to reveal that all this fat was sustained partly by portable suspensors harnessed to his flesh. He might weigh 200 standard kilos in actuality, but his feet would carry no more than 50 of them. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, the bitter enemy of the noble House Atreides, renowned for his greed and insatiable ambition matched by his corpulent and imposing size. Although the Baron is immensely fat, he is able to maintain swift mobility due to the ingenious devices harnessed across his flesh called suspensors. In this video, I'd like to discuss the Holtzman suspensors and how they permit the considerably large Baron Harkonnen to float and move around with ease. I'd also like to discuss how this device is described in the novel versus how this has been portrayed in the various adaptations. The majority of the Baron's fat is sustained by several portable suspensors attached to his flesh that allow him to levitate, achieving the mobility described as a dancing lightness. These hovering devices guard the Baron's body against gravity's pull by employing the Holtzman effect, based on a theory relating to the repellent force of subatomic particles. As stated in the Dune Appendices, the suspensors utilize the secondary, low-drain phase of a Holtzman field generator to nullify gravity within certain limits prescribed by relative mass and energy consumption. To get a better idea of how this would appear visually, it helps to examine how the gravity-defying aspect of this technology works in other objects. The Holtzman field generator within the suspensors is built into a variety of common household items. The first invention that relied on the Holtzman effect were glow globes, an illuminating device that is commonplace across the Imperium. As stated in the Dune Appendices, glow globes are a suspensor buoyed illuminating device, usually self-powered by organic batteries. Glow globes, or suspensor lamps, can be portable. They can either follow a person around or be anchored to their location. They can be set to either hang near the floor or above a door. The use of the term, suspensor buoyed, reveals that objects equipped with a small Holtzman field generator can make them levitate or float. Any object equipped with such a generator could defy gravity in this way. For example, they are also put in chairs for a similar levitating effect and again are likely set to stay at their intended height. They are also put to use in the common assassination device, the Hunter Seeker. It's worth mentioning that the Sardaukar employ this technology as well, relying on it to slow their descent from what would otherwise be dangerous heights. So while the Holtzman field generator can allow for an increase or decrease of the effect of gravity, it is clear that the Baron does not utilize this technology for the specific purpose of achieving flight. The functionality of this technology used with the Baron's suspensors remains a topic of debate because of the apparent contradictions between the source material and the different adaptations that have depicted them. David Lynch's 1984 film, the Sci-Fi Channel Dune miniseries, and Denis Villeneuve's adaptation have all portrayed the Baron not just levitating to get around, but also rising up high above others on certain occasions to achieve something more akin to flight. As described in the novel, the Baron weighs around 200 standard kilos, or about 440 pounds, but notably, his feet are able to carry no more than 50 kilos, or 110 pounds. The fact that he is only able to carry just over 100 pounds of his own weight indicates how much his body has degraded to the degree that he can no longer support himself without them. In fact, he wears them at all times, even when sleeping. In the novel, it is stated that he uses sleep suspensors, which are padded, with one being positioned to support his neck, further indicating that these hovering devices were used primarily for weight support. The way the Baron's movements are described also indicates that his suspensors are merely intended as a mobility aid and not to achieve flight. For example, in the book, the Baron is observed having a peculiar waddling glide caused by the necessities of his suspensor-hung weight. 
Glide is defined as movement with a smooth, continuous motion. He is also described as having a bouncing, suspensor-buoyed pace. The use of the word pace implies movement more consistent with walking. On one occasion, he is said to be standing over Lady Jessica, and on another, the Baron is described as taking steps. So though these suspensors enable the Baron to defy gravity, these descriptions of his movements indicate that they are merely for making his body lighter than it really is in order to achieve a more standard mobility and to give the illusion of a normal stride. In fact, nowhere in the novel is the Baron described as flying or even levitating high above others. Confusion continues to arise within the fandom regarding this subject because of misconceptions perpetuated by the various visual adaptations of Dune, which make it appear as though the Baron can control or adjust at whim his level of levitation. However, the novel doesn't indicate that this is the case. It never describes him adjusting his suspensors to achieve greater heights. At times, the Baron is noted as adjusting his suspensors for comfort, or as a result of his various movements, he alters a suspensor in order to move its gravity-nullifying effect somewhere else. It should be noted, however, that although the Baron may give the appearance of having slow, cumbersome movements, these devices actually enable him to move and react swiftly a feature that certainly makes him a more intimidating presence, which no doubt has been a key factor in the Baron avoiding the assassination attempts that are so prevalent in Harkonnen society. While the on-screen depictions take license with the Baron's ability to fly, I am not completely opposed to the creative liberties taken in these adaptations when it comes to this technology, especially because I personally believe it's within the capabilities of these devices to be able to achieve a similar effect. I can't deny the menacing aspect that can be attributed to the Baron by his ability to rise above others. In a dense novel, there are many subtle details that can be fleshed out. However, in a visual medium, many such details need to be conveyed in a different manner, especially due to the fact that the subtle levitation of his suspensors might also be a challenge to convey on screen. While I don't agree with the level of flight portrayed in David Lynch's film that bordered on the comical, I think the Dune miniseries and Annie Villeneuve's interpretation maintained more subtlety with his suspensors, adding to the Baron's physically intimidating and gluttonous yet calculating presence. What I appreciate about the Baron's use of these suspensors is how this detail highlights a common thread in Frank Herbert's series how mankind's reliance on the technology and infrastructure in place contributed toward its fall into stagnation, an ever-downward spiral that would lead to their ultimate demise. Like the Spacing Guild, the Baron is positioned as the final product of this old Imperium, a lazy, power-hungry parasite relying too heavily on the established systems, manipulating them to serve his own interests. In order to avoid annihilation, mankind's reliance on old technology would need to be broken. They would need to challenge themselves and continue to evolve and adapt. Although the Baron's suspensors are a small element having little to do with the overall story of Dune, ultimately, it helps to reinforce the core themes of Herbert's Legendarium, proving just how much epic stories like Dune draw the greatest power from their details. But I'm curious to know what you think about the Baron's suspensors. Is there a particular on-screen iteration of this device that stands out to you? Would you rather see a depiction of the levitating Baron that's closer to what is described in the book? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.